Osmo Hairy Arts Builder involved for this building company. It was far more focused on <clears throat> what people really look for in terms of building services, as Rob says, delivering that dream, whether it's an extension to the house or whatever it may be. And what truly is important at the end of the day, making sure that we enjoy that experience, as opposed to some of the nightmares night that we've seen on road traders and some of the other cowboy building films uh, on the TV. So, without any further ado, Rob, can I hand over to you? Are you familiar with this baby? Different marketplaces, the main one. 
farms, domestic extension. They've also started looking at wind farms as well, so we've moved into that market. It's exactly the same target work as what we're used to doing. And that's coming on slowly. Domestic extension is going really well. The market, what I've just demonstrated, is renowned for broken relationships between builders and clients. You've only got to watch that million messages here, um, cowboy builders. But that makes my job a little bit easier because the competition is so bad. There's a lot of work out there because we know from every week in an area that we can drive to and carry out building work, there's about 180 planning applications going in. And an average extension is about £50,000. £9 million pounds of work, we're really missing out on. A lot of the people are as well. Lots of opportunity. So, how do we stand out from the crowd? We've got a lot of time and effort to think about how to do it. And basically, it's telling our clients what we'll do for them. Things like covering the floor, <coughs> keeping the building site safe so people can walk around instead of through it, keeping the dust in, we've got this thing called zip fall system up, so we're going to make dust in an environment. And that little um, box, cardboard box here is actually the server room of the local college that we are working in. Uh, the protection. The green box on the floor, that's our the green goddess is the last thing. It takes out 99.9999% of it. A lot of the dust out of the air. And that's the amount of blowing all what is reasonably clean air out the window. It's keeping it all down inside that room. So again, what makes us different? We've got the skills uh, to do the work. We're just letting the clients know that we can actually do it. So, it's our challenge to let people know what we can do. Everybody else has stood up here and done that little bit about coaching. Whether it takes Simon or anybody else, it's something that's definitely you know, value from it. There's three books right there. Um, the first one, the first one called The Evening, uh, Michael Gerber, wrote this. Definitely worth a read. If you've got your green piece of paper, write this down. Definitely worth a read. Basically what happens is, to summarise the book in a few sentences, you can get trapped in the start of your company to do the things that you like doing in my case, reclaim, pouring concrete, getting stuck in with the goalies. It's a technician trap, you end up being the only person that can do anything on that site. And whilst you're doing that, clean tail will do whatever you've got to do. No one's getting the sales in, no one's bringing the, um, the money in case in the bills. So you've got to be careful to avoid getting stuck in that trap. Robert Kiyosaki, um, another book that's worth um, reading, Rich Dad Poor Dad. He goes on there to talk about his rich dad and his poor dad. His, book, his own dad is the poor dad, and his friend's dad is the rich dad, and it's the rich dad that taught him about business. His own dad suggested that he should actually go in to a career work for a college or work for the government, have a safe job, whereas the rich dad taught him to sell things. Okay, another good job, another good book to read. And to summarise that as well, if you're not careful and you fall into the technician trap, you end up owning a job, you haven't got a business, you're not a business owner, you're just stuck in a job. That's kind of the situation that I've found myself in, and it's very easy to get stuck in there. Next book, the really interesting one, is the cash flow by Brad Sugars, so that's the chapter who started the actual coach. Of course, your Simon's got a special deal on all these uh, books. He's usually going around to get the suitcase full of them. He's in his library, it's usually out of the middle of the books that you can buy. Um, we're talking about Bradshaw, and then we met Simon there, and that's how we got together. Cash flow book. These, these two books are basically how to improve your business and how to avoid getting stuck um, in the traps that you need to get. This book is actually the maths of science behind it to improve your book. The main one in there is five ways formula. If you've got your growth book, it's on page six, um, 21. This is a, it's a way of testing and measuring how well your firm's doing and basically it's our business strategy or business plans is how we use to decide how well the business is going. You know what your number of leads are, times your conversion rate, you can work out how many customers you've got. Once you've got your number of customers, you can work out how much they spend on average and the number of times they buy. Times them together, that gives you the turnover for the year. If you're making a fixed profit on every sale, you can 
percent margin you make it times that by two and um, gives you the profit you're actually making. Put some figures in there. What I loved about this, what is um, kind of dynamite, working on the travel every day to actually see this, means you can actually work on your business really easy. Because um, all these things are compounded, it means you can put little or no effort in, some effort in systemizing your business, growing your leads, increasing your conversion rate. And you can increase every single one of those by 10%. Make 60% difference on your profit at the bottom line. Just simple, straightforward, basic maths. This struck a chord with me. And I think everyone in this room can do 10% more. If you do 50% more, 642%. Now, if you just in your well, just in the profit, and watch everyone would like that. So, going back now, I'm just going to cover now each of the topics in red. That's the actual debate lines there. They're the five ways, and they're the ways that you're going to increase your business. The first one is reading more, making the telephone ring more times. Basically, you need to test and measure. And again, going back to action characters, things that have um, got lots of numbers, 10 by 10. Basically, 10 ways to bring leads into your business, improving it by 10%. So, some of the things that we've did, done is I have to get good at writing the sales letters. Which now, we're sending sales letters there for people who were. Um, Apply the planning commission for an extension so we can get a list of people who actually want building work done. We send 90 letters out a week, we get in a report, 1 in 40 are replying. It's costing us £85 for you to actually do it and send them out. But it's brought in since Christmas, £200,000 worth of work. So anyone's guessing so it could return on investment. So that's our main source of getting work. Getting work. The other things that we do are just the usual stuff, but what you need to do with the 10 to 10 is actually measure each one. So you can see how many jobs that are coming from word of mouth, how many referrals. And the bottom there, don't forget to say thanks. If someone says, oh, you know, I've been recommended by so and don't forget to ring up that person and say thanks for them, because next time they'll be twice as clean to do it for you. We do things like leave with job managers. We come to start work on somebody's house, we don't just turn up and get on with it. We'll look at them, leave it through doors, letting them, the neighbours know what's going on. Obviously, tell you how to what we're going to do. But the leaflet's part of the sales and marketing campaign it actually tells them what we're actually going to do um, for our farm. We're going to protect the soft dust. We're not going to turn up. We're going to keep our appointments if we're not. We're going to let them know. So, we have been getting leads that way as well. We've been offering sales commission to our staff, the 1%, just one job comes in from someone they know. And again, setting their RAS to look for a new workforce, we get 1% sales commission. So £100,000 extensions, £1,000 commission for them. That's going back to the measuring things where it's the lead to cost. And you have to work out with 10 by 10 how much each lead costs. And 1% is a reasonable return. And then another way of getting work though is the lines of design. So if an architect comes out and visits your house, do the same in your industry. Someone gets involved in the job perhaps first. Set up an alliance with them where you can get your foot in the door first and not somebody else. Moving on to the conversion rate. That's one of been the, traditionally one of our biggest problems, converting people. We can send out information, the phone rings, we go and see them. Actually getting them to buy offers has been one of our problems. Because when you come to buy a building, it's usually the only time in life that you're going to do it. No one's training for it. Um, the only thing that's left to do is to choose. The builders are usually really bad at buying things there. It's a price. So we're trying to convince people not to pay anymore. Why well, should pay money towards them that competition? <coughs> so we do things like we've documented the sales procedure. When we don't follow that procedure, the conversion rate drops. We've got a phone answering script. And we ask questions, probing questions about the job. Is it likely to start soon? Have you got planning permission? Have you used another builder? What went wrong? Questionnaire, we send that out as well. As soon as we finish talking to them on the phone, we'll send the questionnaire out or email or one post. The questionnaire is a good way of finding out just how interested they are in getting this building to work done. If they can take the time to fill it all out, and it's all about their project, about what they're expecting from it. Um, if they can't bother to do that, and there's no real job there, and it's saving probably 10 hours of pricing the job for no reason. It also, one of the main problems is that taking proposals back to the customers and they're open and looking at them, get to the back end of the price and go, oh, see ya. 
and too expensive. So we make sure now the questionnaire that they fill out the uh, widget part. If they miss it out, it's usually for a reason. Um, we really want to find out if the budget matches what's what it needs to be doing on their drawings. And Brad will go out and see them. And again, it's all about increasing your conversion rate. Um, we use client testimonials and references. They're the greatest source of uh, reducing the risk of someone buying our work. We had a really sceptical client last week. I can think of meet a worse client. We went to see one of our past clients. That uh, they turned him around straight away. You know, really keen to get on and starting his job on Monday. And again, part of the questionnaire goes on to educating people on the building work. There's tick boxes on there, don't more information about how to avoid road builders. Tick the box, we'll send you a um, leaf for a couple of pages, you can read it, and it's steering people down the route of using us or other professional building and avoid using the cable walls. Because there are quite a few around that. We've been around to look at other people's work, and this is the standard of the competition. We've actually built a light switch. We've put a wall in and built a light switch, so you can't get it off anymore. <laughs> I don't know who's who so worse, the person who did the plastering and the person who painted her with it. <laughs> and the next photograph now shows rainwater by coming down to the floor. Now, uh, obviously, the hole in the floor in the bottom is where it should have gone next. It's not difficult to get it right, is it? Someone's kitchen unit there, there's fuse boards, half in and half out. That's just, that's just one job that I went to look at, then we go and put it right. Our sales process wasn't right at the time, to try and guide them down, why you should pay a little bit more to get a professionalism to come and fix it. He's gone off and done the same thing again. That's, I wouldn't say it was a gypsy that can't do it, but that's what happened. And then he's going to, he's going to go down and do the same thing. He always buys on price, he always asks, he's not even going to change his mind. But at our time as a company, we've only quite got things right. We're refining it now to make sure people do have a, a choice and we can see what's going on. So you have to be careful, we don't have to come out with it. It's not our photographs, it's not our hand, we can't be wrong. <laughs> so, the conversion rate, what, what does this mean for our clients? Uh, positive experience. When we go to for the first meeting, we've got the questionnaire, there's got all a load of different questions. Does your order need change? And if they tick yes, and you've got a lot, you know that already. Um, straightforward questions, and you're getting down to the more nitty gritty uh, conversation when you go there, instead of just getting the drawings, going back out, crossing it all up, and going back. Um, not, the general idea is it's shortening our sales cycle from a few months down, or certainly hard. Uh, we also make the time to call back. That's one of the things that we've fallen down before, no, we're not. And we found that that's the thing. You know, they're knocking people off the sales by not, so they're not being there. Actually, you know, we've got a million pounds worth of work, and actually, it's three of these jobs that would have been given to somebody else. So, the number of customers, and that's the outcome of those two things, okay, so we've seen a three fold increase. And the next area of work, as you work on all these things as well, your sales and your marketing, that flows through to the rest of the business. So if you increase the number of leads, you need to make sure you've got someone out there to go and deal with each one of them. Then once your conversion rate goes up and the turn into customers, someone's going to be there to actually go out and do the building work. Um, your average spend, this is once the job starts, we get our customers, so our guys are trained now to look for things, suggest things to people that might save them on maintenance, all that, all people will go to increase in the average spend. We give them a detailed list of work as well, so our guys on site know what was agreed before we started, what's extra, and the client gets what they're paid for. And the number of times people buy, we want to keep our clients to life, so we're talking about uh, recording things uh, when we finish, like when's the next service due on the morning. The guys will be looking around the site and saying, oh, the windows will be changing, we'll put that down, give them a ring in a few months or a year or so it's time. Place the job for a complete building service so that person looks out and I don't go anywhere else. What that's meant in our turnover now, we've already matched last year's turnover in the last five months. We've doubled the number of staff to cope with demand. Um, and then practice better payment terms. One of the reasons we left the telecom market is because what was 30 days has turned into 90 days payments. We've turned that now around to getting a 5 to 10% quality fortnight payment terms and the benefits to the customer was getting a deposit off them because we know they're committed to the job. As soon as they give us a deposit, we book a space in the diary, we can start writing the job, get stuck in, get it organised properly so we can get it finished on the day that we agree. 
for non plan terms might be better for us and better for our suppliers because we can get better plan terms from there and better um, price. Customer keeps five percent retention. That's you know, if we turn to a job and get it finished in our house, we could like might find a few different bits and pieces that need finished. And builders have been usually finishing very badly really going back and doing that. So we let our customers keep five percent and we'll sign everything off. We also give them a, a guarantee, and that guarantee put a line down the middle of it. One side of the line to do with any defects is our problem, the other side of it is the client's problem. So things like if the kitchen unit starts walking, it's because they've had a flood, it's not our problem, it's theirs. But again, the draw falls apart, we'll come back and fix it. Um, profit margin, things that we've been doing now to build a profit margin are all things that you can do in your business. Systemizing things, we've been writing how to manuals. And that's basically what we have to reclaim or how to roof. It starts off with the first section, who in our company is responsible for what role. So it might be just simple things as ordering materials, taking the quantities off, going around checking it before the roofer comes. And then the second part, the middle part, the meat part, is that the instructions about how to do it properly. And at the end, it's the site health and site that needs to be covered. So three different parts to it, <coughs> the responsibilities, how to do it. Um, the site we get by from our employees these are Google uh, documents so they can improve as we go along. Um, we get feedback from our employees at the uh, three weekly meetings about how things are going, do they like it? I've started writing these but I can't write all of them. We do um, electrics now. I can write some of it but not all of it. So I'm going to get the electrician started writing half part of that manual. Which means that when the company grows, we can give these manuals out, print them out, give them out to the new chaps, and they know exactly where to stand. That's how we do certain instructions also work. If you don't need that, then there's a problem. If you do, it can go. And again, it's uh, building up the company's intelligence. If you're sharing it to everybody else, um, it should avoid the big problems. Documented the uh, list of roles and responsibilities, so people aren't overlapping and being trodden by each other. And it's clear lines of responsibility. Set up an online business management so that stops us having to go out and rent an office somewhere. That online business management you know, doesn't need all the things that's in that um, growth book about managing it and backing things up. All the guys on the site can put the information on there, put photographs on there. If the customer can go access up as well. Not all of it, but can get access to their information about where they're standing with their building, whether they've got a paid or a retired or a bit of a charge, so they can see that any extras that have been on site. Also appear on there. We've changed the accountants. The company's 30 years old. We've had the same accountant for 30 years. We changed to a new accountant whilst we were looking around for somebody else. The person that we chose gave us more information before we were even a customer than we ever got in the 30 years working with the old. So, and he's, he came on our trade course to use the online system. And he's now got access to it, so he's given us online, in time information about um, any kind of big financial advice that we might need. Again, profit margin as well. We've again, the team meetings, we've got a set agenda that we talk about, safety, so no one wants to go to work and be injured. We're getting the feedback off the guys, they're the ones who know how to do the job dangerously and they know how to do it safely as well. So we're listening to what they say to make it easier for them. We talk about the sales pipeline with them as well, and that gives them more confidence in knowing that they're going to have a job in the next three weeks because they can see that the pipeline is always getting bigger. You can listen to their feedback. We also give them client feedback. We get feedback off everybody that we work for and then pass that information on to them. If it's good, great, pat them on the back. If it's bad, to take action. We've also got a profit share as well, which you know, is working out quite well for the employees. And again, what's in it for our clients? Now that we, now that we make our clients happy because we ask them, our quality of workmanship is like that. Profit shares getting our employees to think like business owners and not like employees, so they don't just hang the coat up and put in the board and go and collect it and they don't get their input and their expertise. Um, we get, we get customers are keen to provide testimonials because they're happy with the work that we've done. And profits have increased from breaking even last year to, which was breaking even, to make actually make a profit now. And again, some testimonials that we've done. These are key to really generating business. Reduces the amount of risk for someone actually buying off it. These are just three that we've picked up. Um, some of the after sales things, someone actually asked us to come and fit a cap flap. You know, it's not something that we normally go and do, it's the actual um, bottom chat down there, it's the, the architect, and they're going, going back to um, 
building alliances with people, we've got to go and do what we've got to do to keep people happy, so we've got to fix his cap for. So what the future holds for us, we're trying to do, uh, double the size of the company and then increase profit faster than turnover. And we're looking to work with any like-minded building professionals in the West Midlands area. Then to clash with change markets, it's not been easy when it's you know, stretched to lemonation, but against our results with it. Coaching's definitely sped up because you've got someone to answer to every few weeks. If you haven't done what you said you were going to do, too, usually five years ago, no one's answered as anybody. And there's no one more forgiven than yourself. But someone independent, you know, checking all this, um, keeping up, kicking up the backside, making sure you're getting done with great. Uh, if we can do it, any company can. Uh, that's all we can do the same. Okay. Excellent. Not all builders are the same, apparently. I just again want to.